And all of God's people said, say amen again, one time for the Holy Ghost. Amen. We thank God for the choir singing so beautiful this morning. Amen. We'll work through the sound system issues. Amen. You got a bit the extra focus this morning. If you would stand with me, turn to Romans chapter 12, verse 15. Romans chapter 12, verse 15. When you get there, say amen. If you're in Revelation, you went too far. If you're in Matthew, you haven't went far enough. Romans chapter 12, verse 15, there you find these words recorded. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. This morning, I thought it would be good with our souls if we talk from this all-important message, how to be a good friend. Boy, y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about, how to be a good friend. I spent, amen, a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months, maybe a whole quarter, maybe half the year, talking to us about being bad friends. God sent me here on my way to heaven to talk to you about how to be a good friend. You do know the word says that Jesus is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. The word is clear that there's nothing wrong with friendship, but it needs to be the right friendship. In fact, I want to submit to you this morning that the world needs more godly friends. Hello, somebody. We, we, need, we need some folk we can, can count on. Amen? So just for a few minutes, I want to explore this subject, how to be a good friend. First of all, if you're going to be a good friend, you got to check your center. It's right here in chapter 12. It talks about the fact that if we're going to be friendly, we got to love from our center. In fact, let me help you all out. That's why some of y'all ain't good friends. Y'all center is messed up. Amen, Walls. When you got a nasty center, it's hard to love from that. And so you got to first deal with yourself if you're going to be a good friend and come to the conclusion, unless I have God on the inside of me, my center is off. Hello, is there anybody here that know if my, if my center is off, if the core of who I am is off, all of my relationships will be off. In fact, let me help y'all out. If you got a using core, you will use everybody you come into contact with. Uh, some of y'all only want to be friends with some folks so you can get some free McDonald's. That's a, that's a using core. Some, some of you, if you got a stealing core, you only want to get to know folks so you can steal from them. And so you got to be able to check the center of who you are, not what everybody else see, but who are you when ain't nobody looking? Who are you when you all by yourself? Now, let me help you all out. There's a whole lot of folk that is the center of the party that don't like themselves. And be careful of trying to be a good friend when you don't like yourself because you'll find yourself not being a good friend, but instead being a fake friend. Ooh, this is good. You have to first love yourself to be a good friend. Ooh, some of y'all got some of them friends that the only reason why they hang around you so you can pump them up. Amen. You, you ever been around a cute girl that thought she was ugly? So she spent all the time trying to get you to give her a compliment. Boy, y'all quiet out there. Some of y'all might be that cute, ugly friend. You, you, you spend all your time trying to get someone else to validate something in you that you don't believe yourself. And so you've got to be able to check your 
center. Let me help you all out. Whenever folks show you who they really are, believe them. Just believe them. When they show you ugly, believe ugly. Quit trying to see something in somebody that ain't there. And while we at it, put a pin right there. Stop marrying folks' potential. Stop daring, dating folks' potential. If they ain't got it now, don't be dating them talking about they going to make it later. A liar today is a liar tomorrow with a ring on their finger. Check your sense. Are you ready? Number two, don't pout on someone else's shout. Ooh. <laughs> don't pout on somebody else's shout. In, in, in other words, here's how the word says. The word says rejoice with those who rejoice. In other words, the word says stop hating on folk who are rejoicing. Stop putting out folks as fire because you ain't got nothing going on in your life. But get to a point that you can rejoice with other folks. Why? God didn't run out of blessings. Stop sucking your teeth and rolling your eyes because somebody else got a breakthrough before you did. Let me help you out. Some of y'all are stuck because you won't celebrate with nobody else. God say, if they won't shout with them, how am I going to give them what they've been praying for? That's a show sign they won't shout when they get it. Anybody here ever dance with somebody else's party? <laughs> Come on, come, where are my real clubbers at that know you ain't got to throw the party to have a good time? The fact that you show up and it's supposed to be a good time, you have a good time by yourself. That's a good friend. I can shout when you shout, and it don't benefit me. But I'm genuinely happy. It goes back to that core. If you are not generally happy with yourself, nothing else makes you happy. Y'all still here? Husbands, let me help you out. You cannot make your wife happy. Boy, y'all got quiet quick. Miserable folk can't be happy. Now, brothers, if you got a miserable wife or a miserable girlfriend, shout with your pinky toe. You cannot make miserable folk happy. Let me help you out. You can't make miserable relatives happy. If your siblings are miserable, you cannot make them happy. Quit wasting your time trying to make miserable folk happy. Turn them over to God and leave them alone. Why? You cannot kill yourself making somebody happy who is hell-bent on frowning. Sing and dance all you want. Ugly folk just ugly. Don't pout on someone else's shout. When they come to you with good news, you ought to celebrate more than they do. Why? Because you're genuinely happy for them. In fact, you ought to shout because you know you've been praying for this day for them. But some of y'all can't shout because you've been hating all along. Lord, don't give it to them. They don't deserve it, Jesus. Don't give them nothing, Lord. You know they sorry. And so when they come and say they got it, you mad at God. Ooh, now it makes sense about some of your friends, don't it? And now it makes, ooh, it makes total sense why some of you, ooh. That's why that old sorry heifer didn't shout with me. She was praying against me the, the whole time. That's why she's at my wedding rehearsal all mad the whole time. She think it should have been her. Some of y'all, some of y'all, some of y'all can repent at the end of this service. We're going to open up the altar. Y'all just come on. We ain't going to ask no questions. Just, just come, come repent. You done been at your best friend's wedding. Mad all through the wedding, get to the reception, you mad. They telling you, come on down, damn, I don't want damn, my feet hurt because you made me wear them high heel. 
I don't want to take no pictures because you're wearing the maid of honor dresses, the maid of honor dresses. They ugly, and you made me wear them. You've been hating the whole time, and you call yourself a friend. Quit lying. Just tell that girl you hate her. You hate her success. You hate everything about her. At least be real. I'd rather somebody say, Davis, I don't like you, than to sit up in my face and to smile and sit at my table. Just tell me I don't like you so I can say, it's fine. I'm still blessed. Woo, pouting. Pouting on somebody else's shell. Amen. Everybody happy. You doing this the whole time. Back and further and further away from them. Head going down. Mm -hmm. Then you ain't careful. You start putting your words to it. They not going to keep it. They got a new house. They not going to keep it. It'll be repossessed in four years. I'm not even going to get them a good house warm and present. Why? It's going to be repossessed. In fact, I'm going to put my name on the bottom of it so when it get repossessed, I can get my gift back. The word says, rejoice with those who rejoice. Ooh, y'all ready for another half of that? And weep with those who weep. A good friend will never allow a friend to weep alone. <sighs> Boy, I don't know about y'all, but if you weeping, I'm going to weep with you. Why? Because I am in there with you, not just for the good days. I'm in there with you for the bad day. Why? Because God has joined us together, and so I got to be in this thing with you. Y'all still here? Number three. All right, this is a hard one. Put it in your notes. Listen without judging. Now, don't look to your neighbor on this one. Look to the person behind you and say, hey, man, stop all that judging. Yeah, don't do it to the person beside you, but it'll make it hard to sit with them when you look at them and say, quit all that. Quit all that judging. Quit, 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 quit listening so you know how to condemn me. Quit listening so that you know how to damn me to hell. Quit listening so that you know how messed up I am. Quit listening to judge and just ooh y'all ready for this y'all ready for this uh, there's a brother in the bible by the name of Job he start he start going through some stuff and his three friends showed up and they did not show up to listen they showed up to judge and some of y'all have been guilty of the same thing. You showed up at the house for one reason, because it was finally your time to tell them how wrong they are. And I stopped by to tell you how wrong you are. God did not put you in their life to judge them. God put you in their life to love them. And love doesn't judge. Why? Because there's only one true judge. Well, you didn't ask for this, but let me just tell you where you went wrong. Judging? Well, if I was you, I would have did judging. Let me help you out. You don't know what you would have done until you get in that situation. So until you get in that situation, shut up and just listen. Why? All of us are a thin line between crazy. Now, I know you think you got it all, but let the right situation happen. You can be crazy, too. See, some of y'all be like, no, nah, I ain't crazy. You lying to yourself. Let the, let the, let the right thing. Uh-uh. If they mess with my kids, that's all right. If they mess with my spouse, that's all right. If they mess with my mom and them, that's all right. Let them walk across your grass. You lose your mind. Correct. Correct. All of us got an area, all of us got an area that, that that thin line of crazy. <laughs> I ain't going to lie to you. I ain't going to lie to you. I ain't going to lie to you. You can say what you want to say to me. I, I, I might give you a pass. But if you hit me, 
you better hope one of these deacons catch me before I swing back. Male, female, or otherwise, if you hit me, ain't no need to be lying. I'm going upside your head. And I'm not playing the tie either. I'm going to fight until I get tired. Now, if you don't like that, I'm sorry. Don't be dumb enough to hit me. But if you are man enough and woman enough to hit, listen, you can be 80. You about to get an 80-year-old butt whooping. And let the go ahead, the story be told. Davis jumped on an 80-year-old member. Yep, they hit him first. But I bet you they won't hit nobody else. Now, I'll come down and repent. I'll ask for forgiveness. <laughs> I'll ask y'all to restore me. But one thing y'all going to be able to say, well, he was minding his own business when Sister Jackson hit him. We're going we gonna to go visit Sister Jackson in the hospital. She had no business of hitting that man. She could have said whatever she had to say, but she crossed the line. It's that color purple moment. All my life I had to fight. <laughs> I'll kill him dead before I let him beat me. I thought you loved Hoppo. You better get Hoppo. I thought y'all loved Sister Jackson. Y'all should have got her. Yeah, y'all should have got her the moment she bought her fist up. Somebody should have said, Sister Jackson, let's go. <laughs> you know, pass ain't all the way wrapped tight. You better, let's go. And all of us, have an area in which we can lose it, which is why if we're going to be a good friend, we got to be able to listen to folk without judging them because but by the grace of God, there go. That's why I can't judge some of y'all for crazy because I know I got some crazy. It's just different crazy. Some of y'all got sensitive crazy. I mean, my crazy is real. Listen, without judging, amen, none of us would steal, but if I had a baby that needed the money for surgery and it was life and death, and I had the opportunity, I might, I don't know, I've never been in that situation. Y'all know I'm terrified of guns. I am terrified of guns. But if it was a life-death situation, there was a gun on the counter, I don't know. In my logical mind, I say, I'm not going to go for it. But I don't know, because I've never been there. And we spend more time judging folk for situations we have never been in and taking the moral high road for a situation we ain't never been in when the reality is, Lord, I thank you for never allowing me to get in that situation. And it's not because of my goodness. It's because your grace knew me better than I knew myself and your grace wouldn't let me get in that situation. Y'all still here? <laughs> How to be a good friend. Number four. Boy, this is a good one. Y'all ready? You have to know your assignment by God for them. When you are going to be a good friend, you have to understand God puts us in folks' life for purpose. And I've got to seek God for what that purpose is. It is not always for the reason I think that it is. I have not been called to pastor my childhood friends. Even though I've been a pastor now 20 years and we've been friends 30 years, 40 years, I have not been called to be their pastor. And if I'm not careful, I'll try to pastor them when God never gave them to me to be my sheep. Ooh, y'all missed that. You've got to understand what God has assigned for you to do. Just do that. 
stop working overtime in the name of the Lord. And God said, I asked you to do one thing. You've got to seek God. Lord, why am I in these folks' life? What is my purpose? And God will tell you. And you will be surprised when God says, your purpose is just to love them. Don't judge them. Don't beat them up. Just love them. Because I'm going to provide an opportunity for you to share the good news of Jesus Christ. If you love them today, I'll give you a chance 10 years, 15 years, 30 years down the line to share me. But today, just, just love them. Know your assignment. If your assignment is to be a listening ear, stop sleeping with them. That is not called listening, it's called pillow talk. Know your assignment. If your assignment is to be the mentor, then you can't be the ace coon boom. Because mentorship means I've got to set an example. And at times, i got to let you know when you are not living up to who God called you to be. And it is hard to be the example and to have that conversation at the same time. How are you going to talk? You was getting drunk with me. Now you're telling me I ain't supposed to get drunk. But why are you still getting drunk? See where I got to know my role? Because if I'm called to mentor them, there's part of my life they may not need to be able to see. And it's not that I'm trying to hide it from them. It's just that I wasn't supposed to disclose that part to them. Why? Because God put me in their life for a specific reason. I'm trying to cultivate and disciple, and you trying to be transparent to somebody God didn't call you to be transparent to. It's all in the text. Read it for yourself. We trying to treat friends like enemies. And we trying to kill enemies. And in the text, it tells us the exact opposite. Can't do dirt for dirt. That was hard for me. Can't do it. Can't do tit for tat. My enemies, I got to love them. I got to bless them. Boy, y'all don't want to say amen no more. In fact, when I see them hungry, I'm supposed to buy them a hamburger. Amen. Not the hamburger I spit on in the bathroom. Amen, Miss Seeley. For those of y'all out there giving spit water. But I'm supposed to be a blessing to them. And the word says it's like heaping coal on their head. I'm supposed to pray for them, even though they're talking about me, even though they're misusing me. I'm supposed to pray for them. I'm supposed to ask God to bless them. I'm supposed to be a blessing to them, even though they're doing all of that. And then God said, now that's just for your enemies. Now let me tell you what to do with your trifling friends. God said, you got to even love them even more than you loved your enemy because you know they trifling. But I put you in their life for a reason. Now, why, Davis, do I got to be a good friend? I'm glad you asked. You got to be a good friend because it may be your assignment to tear up somebody's roof and to lower them down to be in the presence of Jesus. Why do I have to be a good friend? Because it might be your assignment to carry somebody to the pool of Bethesda so they can get in the water when the water gets troubled. Why do I have to be a good friend? Because I might have to carry somebody's cross and help them even though they're on their way to crucifixion. Why do I got to be a good friend? Because I got to go run and tell the story of what God did in my life. And if I'm not a good friend today, I can't be one tomorrow. So I got to make up my mind that I'm going to be a good friend now. Why do I got to be a good friend? Because the word says that sometimes I got to be the strong one in the relationship. 
Let the strong carry the infirmities of the weak. Why do I got to be a good friend? Because sometimes I got to feed some folk that in my younger days I would have, mm, you know. And why do I got to do those things? Because somebody is watching me. And I don't want to be a bad representative of Christ. And why do I have to be a good friend? Because listen, for some folk, I'm the only Bible they going to ever read. Boy, I wish I had somebody that understood that. that that's why you got to be a good friend. Why? Because some folk ain't going to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, but they're going to read Talia. Hello, somebody. They're going to read Mia. They're going to read Richard. And if you don't show them the way, not by preaching, but by living. Can you live Christ before me? Sometimes I got to be a good friend because some of my friends are going through some things. And they may not know him like I know him. And sometimes you're the only piece in a hellacious situation. Boy, preach Terrell DeMond Davis. Some, sometimes you are the only one that has the joy in a situation that everybody loses in their mind. And so being a good friend is I've got to show up even in the tough times, even when I don't have a word to give. i got to show up. Why? Because won't nobody else show up if the good friend won't show up. At the end of this journey, when you stand before the judgment bar, what will your testimony be? I mean, I don't know about y'all, I don't know about y'all, but I've been, I've been reading this thing for a long time. I don't see where it's going to ask me, did I have the biggest Bible in the group? Uh, it ain't, it ain't going to ask me, did I have the biggest cross around my neck? But you've got to give an account for the work you've done in the flesh. Now, all y'all always think that that means church work. Listen, it's outside the walls that we do church work. It's inside the walls that I get equipped for church work. But if I don't do nothing out there, quit lying, quit putting on my obituary, I was a good person. Did. You ain't did nothing. If you ain't been out there sharing the good news of Christ, not just out of your mouth, but out of your behavior. Your friends ought to be able to count on you because you come here and get equipped. They ought to be able to count on you to have something to pour into them. But Pastor, my friend ain't poured into me in 30 years. May not have been their assignment. But yours might have been the poor into them. That, 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 that brother who was on that bed, I mean, after he met Jesus and thanked Jesus for healing him, I just believe he ran to them four friends and thanked them for their sacrifice of tearing up somebody's roof of exerting the energy, of burning their hands to get that rope down so that he could have the experience with Christ. And I just want to know, are you that kind of friend that you will take the financial hit and the physical hit to get somebody else to the spiritual place Ooh, that they need to be? Well, my friend want to come to church with me. They know where I go. That's why they still unsaved, because they know where to go. But if you really want them to go and they start giving you them excuses, I dare you to bring out your credit card. We going shopping today. What we getting, Davis? We getting some clothes for you to go to church? Because you told me last month you didn't have no clothes. I want to make sure you got some clothes. It's all on me. In fact, you can get, a, you get an outfit for church and an outfit for the club, because I know you ain't going to stop going to the club just yet. And, and Saturday come before Sunday, so I want to make sure you understand, I want all of you to be saved. <laughs> Both the Sunday you and the party in you. That's sacrifice. 
Amen. And then you go pick him up, and even he got some alcohol in his breath, you still bring him to church. And you let him sit next to you. Don't ask him to sit across the other side of the church because you don't want nobody to know you got some friends that drink. And sometimes you drink with them. Let them, let them sit beside you. <laughs> y'all, y'all quiet out there. I know y'all drink. I done been to the reception with y'all. I know what was behind y'all back when y'all was talking to me. I can't name the alcohol, but I know what it smell like. I ain't judge. Why? Ain't my business. I don't know about y'all, but the Holy Spirit convicts me. Not y'all. Some of y'all get that when you go home. The Holy Spirit convicts me. Not y'all. The Holy Spirit ought to convict y'all. Not me. Hello, somebody. I'm just supposed to be the truth teller. It's the Holy Spirit's job to convict you. And if it don't hit you, it ain't yours. Let it hit somebody else. But you are not supposed to be a tour guide for somebody talking about that word was for you, judging. You only know the word was for me if you judging me. What was for you? Can you testify to that? Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. One of my closest friends is someone who had went through something and they got pregnant. And uh, you know how church folk are. Church folks say that they had to go before the church and apologize. And uh, they came to the house and they were telling me about what was going on. They told me about the church folk had come to visit. Y'all know, y'all know church folk always running committee. Be careful when you're on the hellbound committee. Two, three of y'all going to somebody's house to tell them they going to hell. Find out they on their own way to hell. hell hellbound committee. Be careful giving out hellbound tickets because you might want to read closely. It might be your name on the ticket. And so she told me that the hellbound committee had came to her house to tell her that she needed to come and apologize to the church. And she said, what do you think? I said, well, uh, did the church see you have sex? She said, no, we did it on a weekend. He took me out of town. I said, well, did the, was the church at the same hotel you was at? She said, no, wasn't, wasn't nobody in town. I said, was there a video that the church saw? She said, no, wasn't, wasn't no video. I said, then it really ain't the church's business. She said, but, but, but you a pastor. I said, I know, but it still ain't my business. She said, so what you want me to do? I said, you do what the Spirit convicts you to do. And whatever you decide, just know this, I'm going to stand with you. And that Sunday she said, well, I'm going to go up and I'm just going to apologize that I hurt some folks' feelings. I said, that's fine. But you cannot apologize and ask for forgiveness from them because you didn't do anything against them. Your forgiveness has to be to him because your sin was against him. And as long as you've asked for forgiveness against him and he's already said you're forgiven, from where about them folk? Because them is the same folk that wouldn't give you $5 if you need it. And so when it got over, she said, I thank you for standing with me. And some other hellbound folk had to call me. And I let them know, don't come to me with no mess. Because until we understand what forgiveness means, we'll never understand what conviction means. And forgiveness is God saying, well, whosoever will, let him come. That's forgiveness in the ultimate that God says, my grace is sufficient for whatever you ail. My grace, not Davis's grace, not the mother board's grace, not the deacon board's grace. God says, my grace is sufficient. So why do you keep asking them for, for their grace? In fact, next time you ask them for their grace, ask them what date they died on the cross. If they can't give you a date, they can't give you the grace. Ooh. 
I done made some folk mad because you've been on the Hellbound Committee. I would resign from that committee. Because he says on that last day, there's going to be some sheep and some goats. And the goats are going to say, didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we go visit folk who got pregnant out of wedlock and told them that they were wrong? Didn't we beat up folk for having dresses that was too short? Didn't we? And he's going to say, depart from me. You ready? Ye workers. <laughs> Y'all read the Bible? Of an, that's that hellbound committee that he's talking to. He's not talking to Pookie and Ray Ray at the club. Pookie and Ray Ray at the club ain't did no work. And the workers of iniquity ain't did no work. He's talking about hellbound committee. He says to them, depart from me. For I know you not. If you know Christ, he got to be a good friend. I mean, if you know him, really, really, really know him, you got to be a good friend. I mean, I love Will. I love Will with all my heart. Will is my brother. I love him. I love him. There's nothing Will could say that I'm going to judge him. There's nothing Will could do that I'm going to stop hanging with him. And if y'all get mad and say, but you don't know Will, uh, like I know Will, I'm going to say, but that ain't supposed to be for me to know. I love Will. If Will kills somebody tomorrow, I got to go visit Will. Y'all still here? Got to go visit him. If Will get mad at Sherry tomorrow and divorce Sherry, I still got to invite him to my house for Thanksgiving. If Will mess up and get a girlfriend on the side, I still got to talk to Will. Now, part of what I'm going to tell Will is, watch your back, Sherry going to shoot you. <laughs> but I still got to love Will. I don't know if y'all understand this, that, that there's, there's nothing that breaks that friendship, that bond. If we will die, with tears in my eyes, I got to preach his eulogy. And I got to walk past his casket, and I got to tell my brother, I'll see you again. That's the love that God wants us to have in the church, is to be that kind of friend. Not to love each other when we all do perfect, but to love each other in spite of each other. If we'll get a girlfriend and I shun him, and I don't talk to him, and the deacons, we get together and we become the hellbound committee, and we make a motion that we just not going to talk to him no more, how he going to hear the good news of Christ? How he going to hear about mercy? How he going to get the good word to get conviction from the Holy Spirit if we don't talk to him? And I know we'll look holy. We can get together and all wear white on the first Sunday. And we'll come to church and all of us turn our back on him. And he'll leave here frustrated. And he'll leave here dejected. And it is not going to make him run to Christ. It's going to make him run to whoever she is more. And at that point, you ready for this? That blood is on our hands. Because we should have known better. We should have went to him and said, man, we already forgive you. We already love you. We should have put our arms around him. We should have been protected. And we should say, man, listen, on Saturday night when you have that little itch, call us. We should have come up with some kind of game plan to keep him busy all the time so he ain't got no time for the woman. Amen. We ought to fill up his calendar so she ain't got no time to sneak up in there. Amen. When she come around, we ought to be able to put our arms around him so she know that we know that we know that she know that we know. Not that we're going to throw a rock at her. We just want her to know we're praying for him. And we're lifting him up. And I know some wives are going to talk to y'all about y'all shouldn't do that. Y'all shouldn't do that. Listen, we got to be able to tell them, I don't do, this ain't your subject. 
if you was doing your job, she wouldn't get close to him. We're going to do our job, and we're going to do our assignment, and we're going to restore the brother, and we're going to love on the brother, and we're going to be there for him. And when he come back and say, man, I'm sorry, man, I want y'all to forgive me, we ought to look at him and say, man, it's already done. I know it's been going on. We forgave you seven months ago. It wasn't for us to do any other thing but to forgive you. And we've already restored you. And so we're going to rejoice with you because you're rejoicing. We're going to shout with you because we're shouting. We're not going to look at you and look down on you because we don't know what could have got our eye and what could have got our attention. It just so happened to think she was a redhead, and we don't like redheads, so we was good. But we wasn't better. But instead, man, we love you. I don't know about y'all, but if we can get two, three good friends in this lifetime, that's what Big Mama say. If you can get two, three good friends in this, in this lifetime. But Big Mama wasn't looking at this from a biblical perspective. From a biblical perspective, I ought to get as many members as I can to be good friends. Amen. I ought to be able to have a church that I got some folk who love me. Amen. I don't care if I'm in the 30 circles or 40 circles or 50 circles. I ought to have some good friends here at New Hope. I ought not have to pick and choose who I ask to pray for me, but I ought to have some good friends that I can pick anybody. Man, I just need you to pray for me. I'm not feeling the best I can right now. I just need you to pray for me. That's being a mature church. A mature church that, listen, we can bear the infirmities of the weak. I've done my job of preaching this message. Now it's your job of implementing the message. If you haven't been a good friend, repent and change. Don't put it on your Facebook because half the stuff on there is a lie and the other half been exaggerated. Change from the inside out. And we'll see it on your face, based by the book, not your Facebook. And if you have been a good friend, don't grow weary in well-doing. As we stand all over the sanctuary, the doors of the church are open. We extend to you the greatest invitation known to man a relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But maybe you're here and you, you don't have a church home. Maybe you're here and you don't know Jesus. Maybe you're here and you don't have a family. We extend to you an opportunity to join our family.